What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mind Your Marketing Podcast. I have a special guest today, back for her second appearance, but in a the same role with a new brand at the same company. I know that's a lot, but uh, we're, we have Karen Bedell back. So she was actually, I think, on the seventh episode of the show and now is back a year and some change later. Karen, how you doing? I'm doing great, Jordan. It's so great to be back for uh, round two, and so much has happened since the first time we chatted. A lot. A lot has happened. So when you first came on the show, um, the brand was SurveyMonkey. Now, obviously, the the brand has changed now. It is Momentive. Talk me through that behemoth of a rebrand exercise, and not to mention, you know, that's a behemoth in regular times, but doing that in the remote world. Walk me through, what did that look like? Um, what was that process like? And yeah, and then, and then talk me through the other side now that the brand's kind of getting its legs underneath it and it's starting to, you know, uh, it's starting to get out there more and it's been around for, you know, a few months now. Sure. Well, let me first start by taking you back to um, when I started at SurveyMonkey in January 2020. One of the things I was most excited about in joining the company was the fact that we had this beloved brand with incredible awareness. And then I find out, oh, hey, so we're actually on this exciting mission and we are considering making a big, bold change to change the name of a company. A company that's been around for over 21 years, again, ton of awareness, really strong web presence and um, a do- domain authority at surveymonkey.com, but we want to explore something new. And so that was that was kind of mind blowing to know that that was in front of me as a brand leader. But I was so excited because I knew that this was not a decision to take lightly, and that we wanted to make sure we were um, getting the right inputs along the way. So getting feedback from our core stakeholders and partners along the way was so critical and helped give me and the team confidence that we were moving in the right direction because. I'm sitting here talking to you, you know, over a year later, and we're still largely in the same place. We're in this virtual distributed environment, right? So it's like a lot has changed, and yet not a lot has changed. Um, but uh, I, I was just excited that we were going to embark on this this rebrand, and I knew we needed to get a lot of feedback along the way, bring in the right partners to help us. We needed to talk to our executives, our stakeholders, our employees, our customers, our prospective customers, the board. Um, and so along the way, we really made sure that we use technology and our own solutions to get feedback to help us, one, get confidence that, yes, this is the right move. We're going to change the name of the company. And then along the way, figure out what is the right name and what direction do we want to take creatively. And so um, I I'm just so happy that we we had our own solutions at our fingertips to to give the the team and I confidence as we went. Um, and I will say, Survey Monkey is still here. It is our beloved brand. It is our product, our flagship product. So we still have it in our our brand architecture and our our our, our family of brands as a go to market product. But um, now we've got this opportunity to you know build and evolve Momentum as our corporate brand and enterprise facing solutions as well. I love it. And yeah, it's uh, no small task, but it's it's so cool that you guys were able to use the internal tools and, and the stuff you had built to go, okay, like not only is our gut saying do this, but we got the data too. And we're able to back this up. And I, I think one of the products that's really intriguing when I look at Momentum. So, you know, I look at SurveyMonkey and the brain obviously goes to like, cool surveys. I can send out surveys and a bunch of conditional things. Great. Now I look at Momentum and I go, oh, okay. And I'm digging through and I'm looking. And the thing that sticks out to me as a marketer really is the brand insights, the ad concepting. Like, walk me through those products because I think for people who are, or, you know, they're looking for vendors or they don't know like the capabilities that are out there, uh, walk me through kind of some of the power of particularly, you know, that product and, and and how companies and brands can use it. Sure. Well, um, just to set a little bit of context, all of the research that we did over around 14 or so months was, was really tapping into our solutions. We did 10 studies. Uh, this was seven, qu- 
seven countries, qualitative and quantitative research for a total of over 22,000 respondents along the way. And our brand insight solutions were really key to this journey for us. We were tracking the health of our brand um, through through our enterprise offering, you know, in waves. So we would do our brand health tracker twice a year um, for the enterprise and then once a year at the general pop, uh, gen pop level for SurveyMonkey. But we realized we needed to um, take advantage of our new solutions. So now we're tracking our brand health regularly, getting insights weekly. Um, at, you know, after a big change like this, we, we want to know, are we growing in awareness? Um, how do those metrics trickle down the funnel in terms of familiarity or consideration? But it was our brand health tracker um, that was one of the key inputs that told us we had to make a change because although we had this incredible awareness for SurveyMonkey, when it came time for prospects and customers understanding the breadth and depth of our solutions and knowing that we've got robust enterprise capabilities, the name Survey was very functional and limiting in setting those expectations. And Monkey, we found through our research, brought about very specific associations that were more in the um, realm of silly or cute, which doesn't really resonate when you're trying to talk to enterprise decision makers about um, you know, a, a new solution. So anyway, the, the brand insights are, are great for brand tracking. It's really useful to my team and I. Um, and the concept testing solutions that we've developed have also been really incredible for our brand evolution journey, but also a lot of our customers. If you're ever unsure about which creative direction to take, you can upload your ad creative stimuli, tap into our global panel of over 144 million um, respondents and get insights within hours. And I'm not joking, I've, I've done this myself. And you get an AI powered scorecard that tells you this piece of creative resonates with this specific demographic, but actually this creative might perform better with this audience. And so having the opportunity to tap into our technology and our solutions to help inform decisions along the way has been key. And those are the solutions that I feel can really help fellow brand marketers like myself be comfortable and sure about big decisions that they're making. I love yeah, using the tools and the data and taking that to, and being able to say, okay, we're doing the right thing. We're making this decision. Now, on the other side of the coin, there's this other element to this, right, on rebranding and bringing in your team. And now you're sitting there, which maybe was done in a boardroom before with pizza boxes and, you know, really that collaborative experience. How hard was it? or maybe not hard, but what were some of the challenges that you faced with, you know, getting the creatives together to talk through, like, how we're going to communicate this? And not only saying, hey, look, the tech works, the data is there, but g getting people to buy in and believe, like, oh, hey, we're going the right direction and kind of sw swing, yeah, using empathy, I guess, really to say, like, look, how are we... This is how we're going to succeed, and this is what we're trying to do. Walk me through that process, because I can only imagine as team size grows and more people come in and out of the fold, um, that it would be challenging to, to get people all on board and really rowing in the same direction. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the early stages of this rebrand journey were really at, at a small small and senior group where we had a lot of conversations with our executives. We we brought the um, the opportunity to our board and our and our recommendation with all of the the research that we had at our fingertips. But yeah, then we made the decision to move forward, and it was uh, then the the game shifted to how do you bring people in from different functions and departments across the company um, and let them know we are about to make this big change. Some to employees who've been at the company for 10 or more years, um, others who have walked in the door, so to speak, 10 days prior. And the challenge becomes selling them on the reason why we're doing this so that they believe getting buy-in that this is the best path forward and then creating excitement that they are part of this big change initiative and, you know, the next chapter of our company and co-creating that. And it's incredibly hard to do in a remote distributed environment where we're all dealing with our own 
things behind the Zoom scene, uh, right? You, you're, you've all, uh, we've all got our own personal challenges as we're navigating this new world. And then we show up on our video calls and you need to, you need to get people excited. You need to figure out as a leader how to read the the virtual room, which can be challenging. Um, there's the fatigue of video calls all day, or some people don't have video on, and you're trying to read how how bought in are we? Are we excited? Um, so that was a really big challenge um, as we kept having to add new people into the project as we got closer and closer to you know making change. Um, but I found a, one tool actually or one trick whatever you want to call it that really sort of cracked the nut and brought everyone together and we were kind of in like the early stages of uh, creating the brand identity and we needed to share it with our executive staff and say hey we're really excited here's the direction we're going with the new logo and the look and feel and I realized, to your point, we're not going to get everyone together in a boardroom. We're not going to be able to put up exhibits and create this wonderful tactile immersive experience. I've got to sell this over a flat screen to folks that are probably distracted with who knows what happening on the other side. And so we worked with our agency partners and our internal creative team, and we came up with a sizzle reel, which was essentially a short video that gave folks a look and feel of the new brand elements, visual identity, and revealed the name and logo at the end. So we, we kind of built it up with this inspiring story. And at the end, it said, we are momentive. And there was this really wonderful, emotional um, kind of music track that got people excited. And I've probably seen that Sizzle Real video a thousand or more times. It still gets me excited, but that was what helped us get buy-in each and every step of the way. We shared it with our executives. We shared it with every new employee that we brought into the confidential project to, to let them know what we were embarking on. And it helped people believe a little bit more because they got to see it. They got to hear some elements of the brand. Um, there was that visual component in motion. So I, I really think that that the, the power of video, even though we're on video all day, there's still something to be said for that form of storytelling to, to connect with the emotional piece, as well as the like cerebral piece of realizing what a big change that we're embarking on. I love that you, you tapped into there, like the story. Once people could latch on and, and see the story and understand it, all of the speeds and features and everything like those are great but at the end of the day i want to be compelled and what's going to do that is that story right and it's like mm -hmm. we we have this talk and uh we've talked with a lot of people and i'm like oh your website reads like a wikipedia page it should read like a novel right like we can't just do just do a timeline and it's kind of that same thinking when we're looking at creating those internal pieces which sometimes don't have that same level of, uh, let's say, production value uh, put behind them, where if you do it properly, like you said, it's this great tool to really invigorate the team to let them know, hey, when you get on and flip your laptop open and you got craziness going on in the real world, you got maybe some craziness going on at home because it's COVID and like we said, who knows, but you know when you open up that laptop and you start to work, you're on a team that's committed and is going on this journey to create something. And I think people can find solace in that when they know where the boat is headed and they're like, okay, that's why I'm coming in and that's why I'm working on this feature. That's why I'm working on this message because we're really here to change the game. And I think yeah. that that can get people so excited. And I love, I love that creating a piece to just like, you have to, you have to sell and market to the internal team and get them believing before you go out to the rest of the world and getting everybody on board. So very, very cool. Yeah. Um, so now, right, you're up and running and you're still decentralized, you know, like uh, uh, this remote work life. What's next for the brand? Um, is there anything exciting that's not super confidential uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that, that uh, you could uh, let us, you know, let us in on? Yes. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't even reveal any of this the first time we talked, even though uh, the early days of this project were happening behind the scenes. But um, our, our website, Momentive.ai, is just 
you know, V1 of the story that we want to tell. We really put a lot of thought and intention into the brand that we were building, into the story we wanted to tell about who we are as a company. And I will say this before I get into what's new. We did not change our mission or vision or values as a company. That still remains the same. Um, we we wanted to keep that continuity because there was so much goodness there to build on. Our mission still to power the curious so they can shape what's next. But our vision is about raising the bar for human experiences by amplifying individual voices. And so we really wanted our corporate website, Mementive.ai, to reflect that in the storytelling, in the choices we made for imagery, in the customer stories that we highlighted. But what you see currently on the site is just the beginning. So the team is hard at work on building out the next evolution of that site and enabling more storytelling through a blog. I'll go ahead and tease that, so stay tuned. Um, we want to enable more stories being um, being shared about the great way that people are using feedback to make big decisions. You know, we're one of our own best case studies in the way that we used our solutions and technology to get feedback from the people that matter most to feel confident about making this big change. And so there are incredible customers that we've been working with that are tapping into feedback to make their own big decisions. Um, Like Tamar at NASDAQ, who we feature on the site, is leading digital transformation um, to reshape the way that people think about NASDAQ. Um, And we've got John from LG featured on our website, who's really tapping into employee feedback when I think we can all understand the pain and challenges of knowing how your employees are feeling about, you know, what's going on at work or in the world and what's the right choice for them as we figure out how to return to office or, or change the ways in which we work. So anyway, the this, it, expansion of our website and, and richer storytelling is what we have in store um, and and continuing to partner with our, our product teams to showcase all of the new solutions that people may not have known that we offered. You know, we've got employee experience solutions, product experience, customer experience, and as we were talking about earlier, our brand and market insights. Um, so we'll want to continue to highlight all of the innovation and product development that we've done. So I, I hope that Momentive.ai just continues to grow in the rich stories and solutions we're able to surface up to our prospects um, and just deepen engagement with our community of uh, business leaders or reshapers as we like to think about them because they're they're out there you know reshaping their industries or products and so we want to continue to build that out um, through our our web and social experience and, and community channels amazing I, I love it and I love having those values and mission um, you know statements that are really lived and you can see them when they come through in the product and the story so everyone listening go check out momentive Dot AI. I will also link to that in the show notes page. So wherever you're listening, you can just go click the sh- click the show notes link, head on over. I'll also link to uh, Karen's LinkedIn so you can follow along and see uh, what she's doing there. Thank you so much for coming on today. Round two in the books. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to seeing what's next with Momentum. Thanks so much, Jordan. Great to see you again. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. As always, I'm your host, Jordan Shelton, and I'll catch you next time.